Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to helping individuals have a successful accounting, bookkeeping, and tax business. It's in this podcast that we discuss items that are basically devised to help you market and sell your services more effectively and confidently, how to onboard clients with efficiency, how to actually build client relationships that retain the client for their duration, such as the lifetime value of your client being as many as seven years. We're actually committed in this podcast to helping you learn from the experts to get the advice you need in order to build the premier accounting firm in your area, offering quality accounting services and getting paid what you're worth. I'm your host, Roger Connect, president of Universal Accounting Center. And for more than 20 years, I've been working with accounting professionals to help them start and build successful accounting businesses. From the standpoint of actually offering quality services to training staff, opening new offices, and most importantly, expanding their services beyond just quality accounting to involve also advisory and coaching services. So with all that in mind, I'm excited to have today as a guest, Erin Mosier. She's someone I've known and worked with for number, a number of years. She's someone I actually quite admire because of her expertise and her confidence in speaking to people about accounting related topics. Erin is actually someone that's been with Profit First Professionals since ni- or 2015. I was going to say 19 something, but that was way ago. So 2015, shortly after Profit First actually launched when uh, in Mike Michalowicz's basement. So she's got some stories there to share. Erin grew up as a child of an entrepreneur family and has experienced entrepreneurship in a different light because of it. She actually earned her degree in accounting because she saw it as a field that would actually be a way to help small business owners succeed. And Profit First Professionals, so that you're aware, is an exclusive community of accounting professionals, bookkeepers, business coaches who are certified as Profit First in the Profit First methodology to help their clients build highly profitable businesses. So Aaron, welcome to the show. Thanks, Roger. I'm very excited for this. This is going to be so much fun. So first of all, I just want to go back to something that you've shared with me that I think the listeners will actually appreciate. And it's the beginnings of Profit First, uh, how you met Mike and Ron, how this actually began there in the basement, as you once described it. Tell us about the early beginnings back in 2015. Yes, I will. I would love to go back to the glory days. So, um, (laughs) you know, it's kind of funny because life brings you in a lot of different paths, right? You, You tend to ask questions, but there's always kind of that nudge that just draws you in. So for me, that was always um, the conversation of entrepreneurship and success in entrepreneurship. So I actually went to school for that. Um, But at the time that I was introduced to Profit First, I was a full-time nanny in a really beautiful place called Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. And you giggle a little bit, Roger, because you're like (laughs) rolling hills and ponds, New Jersey, (laughs) because that's really what it is. But it's a... Yes, we've got the mountains, you've got the rolling hills. It's really very accurate to say that. (laughs) But um, I was a nanny. And, you know, still, I, I always just kept an eye out, you know, keep your ear to the ground to try and see if there was something that would open that door while I was in school to a vessel to, to serve my purpose, you know? And so, um, I was just scrolling through Craigslist one day and I came across an ad and the ad was very lively. It was definitely one that stood out uh, amongst the, the opportunities that Craigslist offers. And, um, one of the things that really drew me to it was right there at the top. It was, do you want to do something impactful, right? Um, but you you keep going through, there's a landing page. And first thing said, sales minus profit equals expenses. And I sat there and was like, duh. <laughs> you know, as an accounting student, as somebody who just watched the entrepreneurial life, it was, it was like an iceberg melting. Like, oh my gosh, that's it. So it was actually the Craigslist ad was an invitation to Mike McCallowitz's basement for an interview. And, um, I was like, okay, sure. I'll take that risk. Granted mountain lakes is a beautiful location and their basements are nicer than my houses. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know, it was one of those things where you just, you trust your gut and you pray that something else on the other side of that is, is healthy and reasonable and worthwhile and hopefully not with one of those like crazy Craigslist stories you hear. But I went and it, and I ended up crying on my interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a baby because it was, you know, you, you share a story about somebody who's so 
smart and educated and has worked so hard and has such a strong background in all the things that they are capable of and believe in. And they run out and they take entrepreneurship by the horns and it's hard, right? So I was sharing the story of my my life as a child of an entrepreneur and we were talking about money and I had never actually shared my story like that before. And it was incredibly emotional. So I was, I was there on my interview as a 21-year-old kid crying like, well, actually 22, 23, crying like a baby. <laughs> and um, it, was, it was everything I ever needed. It was the vessel that I had been praying would come into my life. It's an opportunity to serve the next generation in a way that I think is absolutely imperative you know, for, for thrival, not just survival. And, um, it turned out to be the goofiest location on the planet. We would, we would show up every day and, um, poor Mrs. McCallowitz making bacon in her, in her kitchen. We're all knocking at her door at eight o'clock in the morning. And, um, (laughs) we would go down into the basement and, and do our thing, shooting nerf, nerf guns and laughing. And, but I mean, honestly, that was probably one of the most impactful seasons in my life. Um, because it was a basement. It was a, it was a cozy, cozy basement. And how often as a young professional coming into this world of um, professionalism, do you get to sit in the same room with some of the smartest, most caring, and I think innovative people in the world, you know? So Mike was earshot of me all day long. Ron was earshot of me all day long. And I just sat there as a sponge and got to listen to everything that they were sharing, all the conversations that they were having. And it was, it was huge. I love it. Now, one of the things that I'm aware of is, is Mike's personal story is one of despair. He, he does actually get to a very low point in his life prior to this. And at the same time, he even has such vulnerable stories as the piggy bank with his daughter. So I'm curious, as you were becoming vulnerable, sharing the struggles that you experienced as a child of an entrepreneur, and the poverty that exists sometimes in those situations, how did that relate? You know, was he sharing that with you at the time? Was he volunteering that as well? No. And actually, it's, um, it was kind of striking because I landed on the landing page, which was a single body shot of Mike McCallow. It's a little piggy in that sales minus profit overview, um, mm-hmm. you know, that led to a book. And I, I had not read the book before I went and and applied. Literally, I just needed that sales minus profit equals expenses. And I was, I was there. But um, yeah, as I read the book, there's, there's a lot of parallels. I mean, he did share that, you know, his journey was not one full of highs, but I think I did the majority of the talking on that interview. Gotcha. So one of the things that strikes me about that formula that you've mentioned now a few times is at first glance, I think it causes, and this is my personal opinion, one of two responses. Either it is immediately noticed as being incorrect in the accounting world, like somebody got the formula wrong and they're like, oh, that's a funny mistake. Somebody didn't do it correctly. It's supposed to be sales minus expenses equals profits and silly them, they don't know it. Or it's intuitively this this visceral, oh my heavens, I think this is an epiphany of something so much more significant than the formula actually shows. It's It's revolutionary. And you look at it and you see this, you have this epiphany moment of, oh my heavens, there's truth in this. Um, So when you saw it, I'm shocked that in the accounting department, having your studies going on, that you saw it as quickly as you did as being revolutionary. So that that's actually quite impressive. So help me understand why would a business want to implement this formula of profit first? You know, I think straight out the gate, um, when you look at why a business would want to implement something like Profit First, you have to think about the things that they deal with on a regular basis, right? One of the most used pain points that we see, one of the most common denominators and everybody that is interested or intrigued by that formula, like you were sharing, they go to their professionals. They go to their accountants. They go to their bookkeepers as somebody that does not have that background or skill set. And they they have their financial statements. They have a general, general overview of what that means. That net income number is sitting there staring at them in the face, right? And it's usually not a horrible number, right? 
usually it's a pretty chunky one, you know, and even if it's just a couple thousand dollars, it's something that makes you feel good. And then they get a bill and they go to their bank account and it's, wait, where's my money? <laughs> right? It's where uh-huh. is the cash relevance <laughs> to this document I just paid you for, right? And that, I think, right there summarizes why Profit First is so powerful. It's clarity. It's real-time cash reporting in a way that is in congruence with just how we function as people, how business owners function as business owners to actually facilitate a product, right? Yeah, what you're describing is something that I I experience regularly with business owners, and I think everyone can relate, which is when you work with a business owner who's not very familiar with the accrual side of accounting, and they're more experienced in the cash side, you show them an accrual report, they see on the bottom line these profits, and they're always curious, but I don't see that. I don't know where that number is. Where is that in my bank account? And those profits just seem all elusive in that accrual standpoint. So you're 100% right. It's this number that it's it's in some ways for some business owners, just an elusive, ethereal number that they can't relate to. So I, I think that's a very real experience and emotion that business owners experience as we interact with them and discuss profit. Yeah, absolutely. And well, and it's funny too, because we do so much in the cash basis because we are a cash management tool. And even in the cash basis, you know, you you would think, again, you go to the bottom of that P&L, you see that number, you would think it would be at least a little bit more congruent with what they see in their accounts. But the reality is there's just so much that takes place outside of that P&L. You know, you go to the balance sheet and you take a look at their liabilities. Money is constantly moving out. I mean, you look at their draws, money is constantly moving out. And it's not as relevant to the business owner, or it's not as obvious to the business owner, even though it's super relevant to their cash flow. Yeah. Just as a business coach, one of the things I also experienced when it comes to profit is for so many business owners, it is a priority in the sense that they're obviously wanting it, but it's it's typically, before working with them, it's typically something that they aren't confident as to what it is. They're always kind of waiting until the end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year with this hope of what's it going to be? Is there going to be anything? And so there's this this curiosity of, is there anything there? there there's, there's kind of a hope that's going on. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think because it's, it's this bottom line, it's the, the end result, and they're just kind of waiting and seeing, did we actually make a profit? And I, I challenge that with profit first. And so that's amazing. But there's a second thing that I think is so important to realize. And it's the fact that when we're working with business owners, this idea of profit, it's so often with taxes, something that they want, but they intentionally try to avoid getting because they're they're sometimes under this premise of, I need to avoid paying taxes as best I can, so I don't want to be profitable. So it's almost like they're self-sabotaging. I want profit, but at the same time, I don't want to pay taxes, therefore I won't have profit. And so it's this never-ending chasing of the tail tell- scenario. And what Profit First does is it comes, on, it comes in and disrupts both of those lines of thinking, making profit obviously a priority, deliberate, and more importantly, something that we can be proud of and and, uh, benefit from. So help me understand, why would a business owner want to implement something like Profit First? I mean, in a nutshell, it's first and foremost clarity. But second, I mean, we are wired as people to function in a certain way, right? We are not designed to want to save. We are impulsive. We have hormones that are literally released when we purchase something right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we experience loss aversion. So we don't want to get rid of anything we've ever bought, right? So there is a whole layer of psychology that goes into just our wiring, right? And while accounting serves a very important purpose, it does not serve this behavioral wiring that we have as humans. And so profit first creates a structure It creates a pathway for business owners to be able to see very clearly and very reasonably within their natural behaviors what is going on in the business. So in kind of a nutshell, if you're not familiar with Profit First, it kind of is designed to create 
smaller buckets, if you will, right? So think about Thanksgiving. You know, you have this huge, huge plate full of turkey and everything you've ever wanted to eat, right? Just sitting there in the middle of the table. And then you have this ginormous dinner plate in front of you. By the way, I'm liking this analogy. I like turkey dinner and I like Thanksgiving. So keep going. Yeah, I might have it for dinner this weekend. But <laughs> you, you take this this giant platter of food and you have this very empty plate in front of you and you're going to fill that plate right up and you're going to eat, 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 eat. That's kind of how our bank accounts are structured. That's kind of how we we function from a financial standpoint. You have all these different things going on in your business, all these different flavors of income, all these different um, expenses that you're responsible for, and it's just there on one platter. And when you are looking at your business all on one platter and you have this nice empty opportunity, you can call a plate, you're going to just indulge, right? So when you're looking at your money from an entrepreneurial standpoint or from a business standpoint, there's really no clarity as far as what the responsibility is for every dollar that you have in that account. So what Profit First does, first and foremost, is it breaks it out. It gives you smaller plates. So you have intentional buckets, if you will, via bank accounts to move what you want. You want to eat less, you get a smaller plate. So we start by shrinking down the plates in which we consume, okay? From there, we're really conscientious of sequence, right? So let me jump in here because before you get into the five plates, let me just mention, I think what you're describing here is so helpful for a business owner because that large plate analogy illustrates very well that when a business owner is running their company, typically everything's going into a single bucket, a single account, and from typically a single account, they pay and manage all the business. And so it's this constant money flowing in, constant money flowing out, and it's hard to kind of organize it, but oftentimes the business owners are a little bit more organized in that, but the accounting that they're using doesn't reflect it. And so it's this hodgepodge, I, like your turkey analogy, you got this plate here and eventually the the turkey and the potatoes and the vegetables, everything starts to not necessarily mix together, but they're all touching because we're trying to get everything we can on that plate. So what you're describing here is a very good illustration of how we need to deliberately start to separate and shrink this down into more manageable bite-sized pieces. Exactly. And actually, it's, it's a concept called Parkinson's Law. If anybody has ever read the book by Profit First, you probably know of it. And if you haven't, you're probably like, why is she talking about diseases right now? Um, but <laughs> Parkinson's Law is this theory that we tend to consume in relation to what is available to us right? So whether that's time, whether that's food, whether that's money, if it is there and it does not have parameter, we tend to indulge, right? Or we tend to be a little less mindful when we're in that opportunity, right? So when it comes to profit first, that's kind of how that bucket becomes dangerous. That platter becomes dangerous. That one bank account can be something that does not serve us in the long run because there is a lack of understanding as to what each responsibility is and you tend to dabble in things that maybe you shouldn't. So tell us about the five new smaller plates. You got your salad plate, you've got your dessert plate, you got your soup bowl. Tell us about these smaller plates that help us better organize and manage the monies that have come in and that are going to be dispersed out. Yeah. So profit first in a nutshell is creating, again, we use the terminology of small plates, but it's, it's bank accounts. You are going to set up five core bank accounts, right? And those bank accounts have purpose to serve your benefit to the business owner, as well as the deliverable as the responsibility you have as a business, right? And so kind of just to summarize them, we have our profit account, which is where that whole concept of profit first comes into play. Our profit account is an emergency fund, right? If anything we have learned in the last couple of years is that life is fickle, and <laughs> an emergency account will serve you really well, right? You know, I know we've talked about it numerous times, but the world would be different if we kind of looked at it in this light. And if it's not a pandemic, it's likely going to be a hurricane, a tornado, a cancer diagnosis. Life is real and it'll hit you hard. You want a business to have a, an emergency fund so you have an opportunity to pivot and 
not have to worry about an emotional decision. So that's what our profit mm-hmm. account is designed for. It's not just this greedy, I'm going to have money no matter what at the end of the day. You know, it's it really is a, a safety net for your business to be able to serve you and your team, right? Then we have the owner's pay account. You know, behind that whole, oh my gosh, where's my money? The second thing you'll hear from a lot of business owners, oh my gosh, I haven't taken a paycheck in years. And that's horrid. Nobody goes into entrepreneurship to get your scraps at the end of the day after your business has sucked everything out of it. No, you you deserve as a business owner to be paid because you are the most important employee it will ever have, right? So we focus on having that emergency fund, but we really prioritize the business owner and we pay them first, right? So our owner's pay account is designed for that. And then we all know... We have a responsibility that isn't just to ourselves. (laughs) It's also to the government, which is our tax account. You know, a billion makes me laugh. She'll spell out the IRS and then she'll be like, they want what is theirs. (laughs) And that's how we look (laughs) at that account, right? This tax account is a protection account. It's to keep you and all the things that you worked for safe. And the goal here is to have strategy. So instead of you spending a dollar at the end of the year so that you can save that quarter that you'd be responsible for in tax, we are going to intentionally put that quarter aside to be able to sign that check and wash your hands of that responsibility, right? Yep. So we have our tax account to protect us and make sure we have what is in place for the responsibilities that we have there. And then we also have, of course, our OPEX account. And these are all of the accounts that money flows to. But ultimately, we also want to have a bucket or an account in which our money flows into, right? So we actually, um, there's two versions of the book. I don't know if anybody knows this, but there's two versions of the book. The old one with the, the pig on it is just as practical, just as important. But this concept of an income account was actually considered advanced in that in that um, version, right? Mm-hmm. Mike re- rewrote the book, um, I think, a couple of years thereafter, maybe 2016, um, 2017. And that was one of the major changes that he made, you know, just as we had more um, experience behind us and as we had engaged behaviorally with people, the income account was non-negotiable. Money coming into your business to be categorized as money in and then flowing into these other functional bank accounts to serve, again, with intention was a game changer, not just in the cash flow aspect of the business, but this gave you a a different kind of, I mean, you put the finger on the pulse of your cash flow, which is, if anybody knows, I mean, that's the, that's the heart of the business, right? If the cash flow is not there, it's really difficult to succeed in other manners. So that's kind of how we learn and did and then adapted the next version of Profit First to really to really serve that need. Now, one of the things that really came to light to me through that evolution is what you learned is, is something I've experienced numerous times with business owners is conceptually, this all makes sense. The whole formula idea of sales minus profit equals expenses, the whole idea of the five different bank accounts makes sense. However, the actual implementation of it, the actual application of it is so much different. It's one thing to conceptually understand it and emotionally get behind it. It's another thing to actually put it in practice. And so your adaptations, I think, make it much more uh, applicable. But I want to speak to two things. One is the emotional side that you've seen business owners go through as they apply these principles, the evolution of those emotions. And then the second question is, is what businesses actually benefit the most from profit first? Yeah. So first and foremost, it's funny because it's just like everything else in life. Anytime you make a change, it's hard, right? And it's not exempt even if it's something that's important. Even if it's a positive change, it's still difficult, right? It still takes discipline and and intentionality. And motivation isn't something that kind of shows up and is there waiting for you every day. Sometimes you have to create that. So emotionally speaking, it's we do laugh a lot because this is <laughs> as accountants and bookkeepers and even financial coaches, you know, we're we're not just that. We are financial therapists. 
right? Because money is <laughs> so emotion. True. So true. <laughs> right? And so when it comes to implementing something like Profit First, I mean, the first thing straight out the gate, most of our, our PFPs and most of the businesses that have implemented Profit First, they, they experience empowerment. I mean, there is nothing like going from this lack, uh, you know, lack of understanding to a very clear picture every time you log into your bank, right? Um, the other thing that they experience is overwhelm, right? Very realistically, there is there is an aspect of adaptation that is required. So you're empowered by the clarity. You're excited and motivated by what you know this means for your business. And then you get into the thicks of it. I mean, it's that journey of tra- transformation that we had talked about at your um, event, Roger. But really, at the end of the day, when you're in that emotion of implementation, the reality is, I mean, we're talking about buckets, right? We're talking about moving money. We're talking about accounts. And that's just one small piece of the pie, right? The reality is our businesses experience cash flow. And sometimes we don't have control over that cash flow, right? Think about accountants and bookkeepers, January through April, you know, that's their heavy season. I mean, they are rolling in it, right? They are also completely tired and have a lot going on on their calendars anyway. But that cash flow is, I mean, there's a surge of it, right? It's a lot easier to go in and move money into those bank accounts when there's when there's movement in that sales aspect of things because money moves money, right? One of the biggest things that impacts kind of that emotion is coming into a space where you start to recognize how your cash flows and when it flows and and that can be kind of scary. So the reality is there's empowerment, but then there's realization. And then after that, there's clarity and peace. So it's it's a few different emotions that you experience along the journey, and they might hit you at different points. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the two things, running a business is an emotional thing because you are checking regularly the bank account. You're wondering whether or not this sell is going to happen. You're dealing with customer and employee issues. But what happens is you change this this management of the funds, let's say, into the five accounts is all of a sudden you get a better understanding of what's happening with cash flow. And more importantly, you're able to see this is actually worth it. There actually is money in the profit account. There actually is uh, money in the owner's compensation account. And all of a sudden, you're no longer running the business with this hope and a wish and a dream that there's going to be something, something left over to share, that there's a return on this investment that you're putting in of time, energy, and effort. So that's where I think emotionally you have people transition from, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to work, to the realization of this is the best thing I've ever done to run my business. I feel like I have more purpose and I'm having a greater win. So lots of emotional um experiences along the way. And I I appreciate how you shared that. But still the question is, is there a specific business or industry that benefits most from Profit First? Not most. You know, I think as you look at entrepreneurship, as you look at business in general, I mean, there's, I've yet to put a finger on a business that does not benefit in one way, shape or form. You know, you don't mm-hmm. have yep. to implement profit first. And here's the thing, you know, we're, profit first is not a bunch of rules and regulations. It's a concept that serves just, again, your general wiring. Even if you take an adaptation of that and it's something that creates more clarity for you, you're going to be in a better position than you were before you did it, right? So profit first, it is a game changer for startups, people that are coming just straight out the gates. It is something that we have seen be impactful for businesses with partnerships. We have seen this be impactful for, you know, the middle size business, 500,000 million. But we've implemented this in in $20 million companies and $100 million companies, all with great success. What happens yep. is, as the business grows, I mean, Roger, you you speak about this often. You know, as the business grows, there's different stages in growth. There's different stages in opportunity, and there's different needs and pain points that come. The cool thing about Profit First is it's live, right? Like it Uh is in conjunction with your business, which is alive, right? So as your business grows, the conversation doesn't always have to be, oh my gosh, you are in a rut. Let's get you out of this mud. The conversation as your business comes into the space of profitability and success, you know, you're always going to be looking to optimize your health, but you're also going to be looking to optimize your growth. And Profit First is not just a tool for you know saving you. It's a tool for positioning you to be able to capitalize on opportunity 
and drive that growth strategy with a financial strategy to support it, as well as clarity in the decision-making process to serve it. So it's, you know, there's not a best business. It serves all of them, but it really does change the game and it just grows as the business does. I love how you explain that simply because you're right. It's not a specific industry, nor is it a specific type of business, such as a service or a manufacturing company or even a size. All businesses can benefit from this because in all reality, all we're talking about is zeros, whether there's one zero after the number, five zeros after the number, seven zeros, it's a number. And what we're talking about here is more conscientiously running where those numbers end up. And so this this bucket or plate uh, plate analogy helps a business owner, whether they're dealing with a multi-million dollar company or a, a smaller entity, run it more efficiently. And the thing that I think is powerful about this and your examples of these larger businesses doing this, it all comes down to the fact that I don't care if you're a multi-million dollar business in revenue or a much smaller business in revenue, at the end of the day, what matters is whether or not you have profit left over. And there are numerous businesses out there that are very small, that have huge profit margins. Others, same revenue stream, have no profit margins. And then you go to the larger companies. There's huge businesses that have large revenue streams that are very profitable and others that are just eking by, there are large companies that go bankrupt as well. So the whole principle here is that the premise of profit first is applicable in all those situations. So that begs the question of if we've got a, a business model that works in all business types, that can help all business owners, that can actually be implemented in any business, and conceptually it makes sense, what's the need for a profit first professional? Where do they step in? How does that make, how does that actually help? Yeah, it is something that, again, going back to just how we're wired, you know, motivation doesn't show up every day. Mindset isn't something that just happens. There are layers in our business and layers in our lives and just being human that require support. We are not individuals that don't want to collaborate. You know, we have a natural wiring for community, right? But beyond that, I mean, there's nothing like having a person in your corner to support you when you are in that stage of, oh my gosh, what is happening? You know, I need to talk about this. And sometimes it's just that, you know, sometimes it's just sitting there and having some perspective. Sometimes it's, they sit there and you share and just get all of that out of your head, off your chest, you know, out of your heart so that you can reflect and digest and make a decision, right? But really at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's no different than anything else in our lives. You know, when you have support and you have accountability, you are going to go much farther in your physical training than you ever would. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you're going to tell me to do 20 burpees, I might not keep pace if I don't have somebody there saying, okay, pick it up. You know, that, that is really a powerful thing to have somebody there to kind of correct your form, to be able to ask good questions, bring into light profit potential. So we're talking about buckets, right? Here's the cool thing. We're talking about buckets. Mm -hmm. All of this conversation is incredibly surface level. You could read the book, you can take this concept and you can bring it into reality pretty simplistically. I mean, that's the magic of it. Profit potential is a different subject matter, right? To be able to come into a space look at something in your business, ask a question, move money and drive conversation to be able to identify what the best next step is to serve your goals, but also to create wiggle room in a space where maybe there's not that much, right? That's a powerful, powerful thing. And people do that for us, right? So our profit first professionals are accountants, bookkeepers, and coaches that don't just have certifications in Profit First and the methodology, but they're people that have done it, right? They are required as Profit First professionals to run this in their business. Yeah. And so as they're going through, I mean, I can tell you as somebody that works to train them and with them, it's not always easy, even as somebody that is completely versed in accounting and bookkeeping, right? It's not always easy as somebody who has a strong business because there are people involved. Now you have employees at one point. You might get to a stage where you're looking to move or open another facility. I mean, having a sounding board, having that accountability, having somebody to call you out when you need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those are all really healthy, important things. And you know, it's it's imperative that every business owner, even if it's not necessarily in one specific 
you know, avenue of, of advisement, you know, you should have some confidants in your corner. You should have a, you should have a board of directors that you can turn to and have these conversations with in a really real light. And that's what our profit first professionals are. So having worked with business owners, I can share that there is an epiphany when they learn and, and, and choose to adopt this model. They, they see the genius in it and they're eager to implement it in their company and benefit from making profit a priority. However, it's working with a profit first professional that allows them to then have the discipline to implement it, set up the accounts, do the disbursements, actually use the system as it's intended. Otherwise, what happens is they have this good faith start and then they fall, they, they, they fail to implement only because of the fact that life gets in its way, business continues to come up, and so they just don't follow through. And yet working with a profit first professional, they're able to more importantly implement and f- stick to the regiment, follow the routine, trust the process, and after months of then doing so correctly, then begin eking the the rewards. And it's not to suggest that the rewards come months later. It's just to say that it's meant to be a long-term process and it just gets better and better over Mm -hmm. time. It's like a good wine, I guess. So what we're looking at here is a good profit first professional ensuring that you not only implement, but do so properly the system and then benefit as you could. It's like any other coach uh, would do with their uh, their pupil, let's say. It's helping them realize their fullest potential. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break away for a quick sponsor mention and then come back and, and we're going to continue this discussion. But from a sponsorship perspective, I've got two things here to share with everyone listening. You want to go to the episode description and in the episode description, you'll find information related to first, you're getting the must-have books that you need to have in your library as accounting professionals to ensure that you're able to work with your clients and offer quality accounting services. The first book that you need is the book Red to Black in 30 Days. It's the Small Business Accounting uh, guy, Accountant's Guide to Quick Turnarounds. It's meant to actually help those business clients that you have who are in the red quickly transition to being in the black. And this is important for you because it allows you to enable an engagement with them to get, to get for you to get paid handsomely for your services and helping them transition from being in the red to being in the black. The second is the book In the Black. It's the nine principles that you need to implement with your clients to ensure that they stay in the black. And then ultimately, what we're discussing today, it's the book Profit First, allowing you now to actually receive the proper benefits, the the allocations of those profits on a regular basis through the owner's draw, and more importantly, make profit a priority, something deliberate in your organization. So as an account Accounting professional, imagine taking someone from being in the red to being in the black, staying in the black, and benefiting financially as your clients so that you're able to actually be the profit first guide that you need to be. Learn how you can become, in fact, in the end, a profit first professional after working with your clients as a profit and growth expert. So, all this information is going to be found in the episode description. Go there for more details. And with that, get the library of books you need to see what you can do to take people from being in the red to being in the black and then benefiting with profit first. So, uh, Aaron, I think this conversation is amazing. So, I want to ask, how does someone start their the journey of implementation, what they can expect to actually do with regards to implementing profit first? Well, I would say first and foremost, you know, if you have a bank account open, you know, here's the thing. It doesn't have to be, hey, let's open all these things. You know, let's go to the bank and open 15 accounts. Most businesses have an income, you know, have some kind of money account for their income. That's right. They're going to have a checking account. They also likely have a savings account. Yeah start there. You have a savings account open. If you can't do anything else, if you can take what you already have and start intentionally shifting 1% into that account, label it your profit. Start there. See what you can do. You know, one of my favorite things about um, Profit First just in general is just it is designed for you to be able to leverage your natural wiring, right? Profit is always going to be a powerful place to start, but tax season's here, right? Where is your greatest peace point? S minus P equals E can be anything that's of, you know, passion or purpose, but it also can be peace, right? So where are you most stressed out about your business? Yeah. If you can name that off the top of your head as I ask that question, you start there. Open that account. Identify what you want to see in there. 
and start squirreling money away realistically, right? 1% <laughs> is always a great place to start because the last thing you want is to squirrel unrealistically and have to go backwards. But yeah, yeah. take that account you have, label it according to what will bring you the greatest peace. Profit is always a, a powerful place to start because again, we need those emergency funds. We want them in place, right? But think about what will serve your business and just start moving money with the intention of not touching it. So share with me now something about the Profit First professional community, this group of people committed to eradicating entrepreneurial poverty. It, it's, it's more than a book. It's more than just offering it as a service. Tell me about the community itself. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I giggle a little bit because I, I, I feel like somebody paid me to say these things, but it's really how I feel. You know, you, we have the greatest community of, of professionals, I think, on the planet. And if they're not here, we've probably crossed paths or we will cross paths with them at some point. You know, it's people are incredible. People are the, the single most important thing on this dang planet, right? And we can talk about profit and opportunity and, you know, systems and process and all those different things that will impact your your money, Right. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're talking about life, right? And the coolest thing about our family is that everybody is kind of cut from a similar cloth where they are in this for their clients, for their business, because they want the world to be a better place. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, the collaboration, just the sharing that goes on here. I mean, we've had people open up their homes to others in, in need. You know, we've had people share their resources that they've spent decades creating. You know, we've had people just come in and sit on the phone while, you know, somebody shared or got excited. You know, it's it's really beyond just, hey, we're profit first professionals, sell this, you know, or position this to monetize as a service in your business. You have a new tool. You know, it's no, you're coming into a community full of perspective you know, full of perspective, full of, you know, hope again for the future and, you know, people that are action oriented to bring that hope to life. What, what tips would you share to someone who is wanting to either become a profit first professional or actually is in the process of impl implementing these principles with their clients? Oh, good question. Um, so if you are looking to become a profit first professional, you can go to our website and, and click become a profit first professional at profitfirstprofessionals.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and just, you know, continue on that process. I mean, really, I think the most important thing is to make sure that, again, time is reasonable and that this is something that you see being of service for you and your clients, right? But keep the path, keep asking good questions. You'll find that you'll get where you need to be as long as you're diligent in that, right? If you're just starting out the journey of implementation in your business or implementation in, you know, as a PFP, right? Um, you know, it's it's really just creating realistic goals. And I mean that in a way where, you know, often we start to dream too big or we, no, 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 here it is. We, we don't dream big enough okay. and we don't start small enough, right? So if you're in this space where I don't know where to start, what can I do to start? I mean, again, I mentioned that 1% in a profit, 1% into a space that wires peace, but really start with what you have. Start with what's realistic. If you don't have anything in place right now for your financial well-being or you don't have the time to get into what's going on in your business, I mean, a cobbler kid seldom has shoes, correct? Right? Yep. If you as an accountant or bookkeeper or coach are struggling to reconcile your own books, <laughs> you know, have things in place for you. Start scheduling that time on your calendar, but also start putting into place something that will serve you and that aspect of peace going into this next stage. Love it. Leverage love it. that natural wiring. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to summarize some of what we've been discussing and uh, at the same time, ask Aaron for a final thought here, just a moment. But let me start with a mention again of our sponsors. Universal Accounting Center is making available to you this library of books, eBooks that you can take advantage of right now to have within your firm, the principles you need to take your clients from being in the red to being in the black, as well as keeping them in the black with the nine principles of how to actually make uh, profit a priority. 
But lastly, this book that we're discussing here today of Mike McCallitz's The Prophet First. And with that, what we're going to do is give you the opportunity to learn these principles and see how you can actually actually apply these with your clients and get paid as, in fact, a business coach in the implementation of these things in those clients that you're working with. So what I'd like to do is just point out that as a summary, Erin is a delight. She's definitely someone who knows what's going on as it relates to entrepreneurship and starting businesses. She's been there. She experienced it as a child. She's been working with business owners now for a number of years. And in that process has seen what it takes at an emotional level and most importantly, at a practical level in implementing profit first principles to make profit deliberate and intentional. And one of the things that I think is so helpful about this is she put put it in a very practical way. She illustrated how come emotionally this can be challenging and at the same time that it is very simple in bite-sized pieces with the plate analogy as to how these accounts work and how we can actually use them to better manage our cash flow and literally put ourselves in a situation where profit is a priority. So I love how she shared that. I definitely encourage you to go to the episode description and get the related information to our discussion today. But with all that said, Erin, what what would be a final thought that you would actually want to share right now? I mean, really, I think we we are wired. We are individuals and we are created with intention and purpose, right? You know, keep putting into place things that allow you to serve that. And money is one of those ways and a mo- one of the most powerful tools to facilitate some of those things. So as you're going into the next stages of business, the next stages in life, you know, keeping in mind that your money is a tool, make sure every dollar goes to position you to serve your greater purpose. Perfect. Well, I thank you, Aaron, for being on the show. I know that everyone listening has found this helpful and not only that, entertaining. So that's always nice. Uh, Let me just kind of wrap this up by encouraging everyone to listen to the other episodes where I share tips and tricks of things that you can actually do to become the premier accounting firm in your area. Subscri- subscribe to the pod- podcast and in doing so, get notified as to the new releases and episodes that become available. But for more information on how you can apply these principles in your business, you can please visit us at universalaccountingschool.com and there find out more information about programs available to train you, your staff in offering quality accounting services and in fact, transitioning into offering more more advisory and coaching services. In doing so, you can also contact us at 801-265-3777. And always remember this, if it's about counting, it is universal. Take care and have a great day.